Dr. Christian's office. The Vaseline Program. The only program in radio where the audience writes the scripts. Tonight it's Milton, Massachusetts that gets the spotlight. And the prize goes to Robert C. Schimmel, 178 Edge Hill Road for his play Sterling Silver. Starring Gene Herschel as Dr. Christian with Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price. No woman can look her best when her hair is dull and dingy looking. But no woman ever need allow her hair to get that way. Because, ladies, with this simple glamour treatment, you can overcome dryness of hair and scalp easily and quickly. Give your hair enchanting lights and softness. Just do this. Before each shampoo, massage the scalp liberally with Vaseline hair tonic. Then steam your hair with a piping hot towel for several minutes. After the shampoo, brush in a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic as you would a brilliantine. This Vaseline hair tonic glamour treatment supplements natural scalp oils, keeps your hair smooth, lustrous, lovely. The very first time you use Vaseline hair tonic, you'll notice how much easier it is to keep your hair looking neat, too. Curls respond to your comb instantly, fall into a flattering, lustrous frame for your face. Give your hair soft, gleaming beauty this winter. Use Vaseline hair tonic regularly. Tonight, ask your druggist for Vaseline hair tonic. Since tonight is Halloween, it's as good a night as any to raise old ghosts. So here is Dr. Christian in his office telling Judy all about sterling silver. Well, well. So they're going to tear down the old River Sand Opera House. I'm sorry to hear it, Judy. I thought you'd be. It says young Sam Roberts, who inherited the property from his father, is going to put up a big new movie house on the ground it occupied. A movie house, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, it's to be expected. The old daughter yielded to the new. Ah, there's no changing time or turning back the clock. Although there are times, Judy, especially when I think of the old opera house that I'd like to. Did any of those old playbills in your office come there? No, no, I've acquired those elsewhere. But many is the good actor I saw years ago in the opera house. Sir Birbaum Tree, Robert Mantell, Sarah Bernard, and... And? Well, maybe I ought not to mention him. Who? Oh, his uh, autograph is framed in that little silver frame. You mean sterling silver? That's right. Oh, all the time I thought he was a great physician. He was a great physician, Judy. Only he didn't peddle pills. He peddled thrills. Thrills? Mm, an actor. Oh, I suppose as the world measures actors, that uh, there are very few of us who remember him in the same breath with Southern and Marlowe. But to my childish mind, he was the greatest man who ever lived. A sort of lone ranger? That's right. He always starred in his early year in plays that came out right at the end. Virtue triumphed over vice. And to those of us who saw him, young, stalwart, always conquering evil, why, he was the greatest doctor of youthful, jaded spirit I'd ever want to meet. And you saw his every play? All of them. Oh, you spend thrift. <laughs> ah, but that's the wonderful part of it. It didn't cost much to have your soul mended by sterling silver. You see, he played in what we call then the 10, 20, and 30 circuit. Oh, what was that? Uh, 10 cents in the gallery, 20 in the balcony, and 30 cents in the orchestra. Uh, I always sat in one certain seat in the gallery. My, uh... Father gave me 15 cents, 10 for the show, and 5 cents for peanuts. You were eating peanuts? Uh-huh. And they've never seemed so good since. Or any show since, for that matter. Oh, Judy, I... I wish you could have seen Custer's last fight. Oh, oh there was a play. And uh, there was a lot of shooting in it. Oh, there must have been. Oh, we could scarcely see the actors for the smoke which filled the theater. <laughs> I used to breathe it in deeply and cough and love it. <laughs> oh, boys would. And yet the play always left us tearful. Tearful? Why wouldn't you be if you saw your hero shut down by bloodthirsty redskins? <laughs> St. 
Sterling played that show years after year and uh, ended his career in that very opera house. Oh, he died? No. He and Sam Roberts' father, who owned the show, had an argument to say. Anyway, that was the end of Silver and of Custer's last fight. But was his real name Sterling? Oh, oh no, no, it was Bob. But because he always played parts that uh, held him up as the essence of perfection, the name Sterling fastened to him and stuck. I really believe that he grew to be like the men he portrayed. Fine men. Good men. That's too bad the world has more like him. Sterling. It fitted him to perfection. Oh, I wish I could have known him. What happened to him? Well, he drifted away. He'd be in his 80s if he's still alive. Oh, come in. Why, Sam Roberts. Hello. Well, for goodness sake. And looking so much like your father, I thought you were he. Glad to see you, doctor. I'm glad to see you. Oh, uh, Judy, you know Sam Roberts, uh, who owns the opera house? Oh, of course I do. How are you? Well, thanks. And you, uh, <clears throat> prettier than ever. Oh, Mr. Roberts. Sam, you look like the world was treating you well. Well, you look pretty good yourself, doctor. I see by the papers you're going to tear down the old opera house. You know, I... I knew your father pretty well, Sam. Well, that's why I'm here. The last thing before he died, he told me to make sure you got those framed playbills that covered his office walls. Oh, Sam, I couldn't take them. They were a lot of money uh, to collectors who have a lot of money. It's a wonderful collection. Well, that's all right. He never forgot that you saved his life. He wants you to have them. You'll take them, won't you? Well, yes, if... That's the way he wanted it, but I must admit I, I feel a little guilty. Oh, forget it. The old man would haunt me if I went against his wishes. Besides, you like that sort of thing, and I want you to have them. Well, Sam, it's just too oh, much. they're yours. Come down around noon. We'll go out and have lunch together. You too, Judy. Oh, thank you. There are a lot of old records in the office I've got to go through, but I'll be ready. Okay? Okay. I'm thrilled, Doctor. I've always wanted to see the inside of the opera house. Will it be full of ghosts? Oh, now, Judy, don't expect much. <laughs> Before it, it'll look pretty old and dirty. I want to sit in that seat in the gallery where you used to eat peanuts. <laughs> yeah, we should have bought some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the door we are going to. Hmm? Hey, uh, uh, look out for that crossboard. Oh, all right. And this, Judy, is the lobby. Oh, Looks pretty dingy in this light, doesn't it? Ah, but not in my memory, Judy. Oh, see the window over there? Yes. Picture me reaching up on my toes to give the man my treasure dime. Oh, it seems so high then. Have you seen all there is to see of broken angels and blowing plaster horns? Huh. Uh, here's the door to upstairs. Oh, Doctor, look at the dust on that rail so thick that it looks like moleskin. Yeah, you better walk in the middle of the stairs. Otherwise, that new fold coat... All right. Climb, climb, climb. They were the golden stairs once upon a time. Doctor. What's that? What's what? thought I saw something move down there on the stage. Oh, undoubtedly the ghost of sterling silver. <laughs> this is the eerie place, all right. Well... Shall I knock on the door? Yes. Goodness, how loud it sounds. Well, Sam Roberts must have stepped out. I'm sure he won't mind if we go in and wait. Ah! Oh, doctor, they're on the floor. It's Mr. Roberts, isn't it? Yes, he's been shot, Judy. Run next door and call the hospital to send an ambulance quick. Then he... Uh, he's alive, but hurry, Judy. That's all there is to tell you, Chief. Whoever it was evidently slipped down the stairs and out into the street. I wonder who could have done it. Maybe we'll get some idea when Roberts is able to talk. How is he? Still unconscious, but I think he's going to be all right. Good. I don't know what the motive was, but it doesn't seem like robbery. 
There was a wallet full of bills on Roberts. It wasn't touched. Uh, Dr. Christian. Yes? Are those playbills Sam promised you worth anything? Real money? Yes and no. Intrinsically, They're just would... yellowed old paper, but how much would they bring in the market? Well, to one who wanted them badly enough, uh, they might bring a small fortune. You don't think anyone was after them, do you? Well, I never thought of that. It could be. You better hop in the car with me and go down there. I've just got a hunch. It's not good. I want to make sure, pronto. Well, what'd I tell you? Gone. Every one of them. Well, there's one thing sure. They didn't walk away. Somebody's been in this theater and I'm going to know who. Dr. Christian's office. Hello, Judy. This is Chief Parker. Dr. Christian there. Oh, yes, Chief. Uh, it's the chief of police. He's right here. Thank you. Uh, hello, Chief. Doctor, we went through that place, but it was no use. I thought we could trace something but the dust, but the appraisers have been all over and messed it up. I'm sorry about the playbook. No, it's all right. They'll show up sometime. We've sent out a description of them. Oh, uh, and another thing. We found the shooting iron. Shooting iron? Yeah. Pretty fancy affair. Got a silver butt and filigree work and the monogram SS engraved on both sides. But no fingerprints. Did you say SS? Yeah. That means something to you? I was just wondering. And you're absolutely sure there were no fingerprints? Positive. I suppose you have a guard around the opera house. Yeah, just as a precaution. It was like locking the barn door after the horse is stolen. Uh, when can we talk to Sam Roberts? Uh, I'm on my way to the hospital now. I'll let you know uh, as soon as I've seen him. Well, Sam, are you fairly comfortable? Sure, I'm all right. I'm glad to see you, Doctor. I've got to tell you something. And I've got to tell you something. You found a gun. And the silver filigreed butt had an SS on it, didn't it? You saw the man who shot you? No, but I'm sure who it was. Why? Because the man went into the theater with me and on down to the stage. You don't mean Sterling Silva? That's who I mean. Oh, it doesn't seem possible. I thought he was dead. It's not only possible, but true. He came to River's End to see me. He read in the paper that I'd taken over Dad's old theater. And he had with him two of those guns. He wanted me to buy them. Poor devil's hard up. His famous brace of silver pistols? Sure. Loaded? You can be pretty sure I didn't know they were loaded. Anyway, he's the man. Oh, I'm sorry. Doesn't seem the act of a man like him. I'll admit that, but evidently he had a reason. Look at this paper. Oh, it's a promissory note signed by your father. Uh-huh. Made out to sterling silver for $30,000. It was in the mess of records I was looking over. Something's funny somewhere. Is it genuine? As if anybody could fake that signature. My father wrote it all right, and it looks like Silver was there to get it. Oh, Sammy, doesn't make sense. Do you think Silver was a man who would try to sell you a brace of silver pistols and uh, then leave you only to return to shoot you? No. No, if he wanted that note, he would have told you. If it wasn't Silver, who was it? You uh, heard about the missing playbills. Yes, but I don't see the connection. Wait. Wait a minute. They'd be worth a lot of dough to somebody who knew the value. And the story about your tearing down the old opera house has been rightly publicized. I see. Then it, then it could be just a professional thief. But in that case, what happened to Silver? That's what we've got to find out. Judy, uh, about the promissory note that Sam found, do you think the elder Sam cheated Silver out of that much money? But why would any intelligent man lend that much money and then not keep the note in his own possession? Doesn't make sense, does it, Judy? No. And yet... And uh, to think while we were talking about him this morning, Silver was in River's End, alive. 
You remember I thought I saw a ghost moving in the old opera house? <laughs> Phantom of the Opera House, hmm? Did you say Phantom of the Opera, Judy? Uh, did you ever see the famous play by that title? No. Well, I did. And it gives me an idea. Phone Chief Park and ask him to meet me at the Opera House immediately. Yes, Doctor. Will you please tell me what the Phantom of the Opera has to do with it? The Phantom of the Opera, Judy, lived in the dark recesses way down onto the stage. <laughs> This confounded stage is an eerie place, Doctor. What was that? Oh, bats, probably. Now, remember. I'll go across the stage with my flashlight. You stay behind the door. Yes. Yeah. Eh? If he attempts what I think he will, he'll cut in back of me and make a dash for it. Uh, are you ready? Yes. And those, don't use your flashlight until you must. Okay. Go ahead. Let's see if anything happens. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. Each has his entrance. There he goes, Chief! Got Don't move, you! Or you're a dead duck. Okay, don't shoot! Stay where you are. Huh. Put your face up so we can take a look at it. You know him, Doctor? He your friend, Sterling Silver? No. No, Silver must be a much older man. But I think this fellow can tell us quite a few things we want to know. Keep your hands up. All right. Well, let's see if you got a gun. Yeah. Here it is. Holy snake bite. A silver filigree butt with an SS on it. Dead ringer to the one we already got. Come on, you. Wait. What have you done with Silver? I, I never meant to do anything to him. Then you did do something. Where is he? Down in the prop room, under the stage. Alive? Yeah, but he's out like a light. I had a conk him over the head and he left the office this morning, or Roberts would have known. I took his gun off him, but I didn't know there were two until later. I'd uh, better keep him out of here, Chief. Come on along with me. You and I have got a lot of chinning to do. And, and Chief, send in a couple of men with a stretcher. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, what did you do with those playbills? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> You've been on duty all night, Judy. Better run on home and get some sleep. The hospital nurses can take over from here. He certainly hit Silver a wicked blow. Well, if Sterling Silver recovers the way he used to from being chopped off cliffs and blown up in caves and even being shot dead by setting bull, <laughs> that little concussion won't even be remembered. Ah, uh, he's still handsome. Judy, Judy, <laughs> off with you. Uh, but what about you? I'm going in and tell Sam Roberts what's uh, been going on. Now, uh, good night, Judy. Oh, rather, good morning. <laughs> so long, Doctor. Good morning, Sam. Well, how are you feeling? Never mind about me. How's Silver? My, my news traveled fast around the hospital. I asked you, how's Silver? He's fine. I just left him. Did you mention that promissory note of Father's? Yes, and do you know how it came into being? Do you? Well, Silver had saved $30,000, a tidy little nest egg. Your father, knowing the improvidence of actors, offered to invest it for him. Wrote out the note, but Silver refused. So the note remained all the years in your father's safe, and Silver's money drifted away. So he was down to selling those pistols he treasured. What did they get out of the thief? Just what uh, Chief Parker and I sort of uh, pieced together. I seem to remember it was you who had the hunch. Well, anyway, Silver caught the thief stealing into what your office. Grappled with him, but uh, being younger, the thief hit him on the head and knocked him out. Uh. He took Silver's gun, but claims he didn't know it was loaded. He was only going to scare you, but you got up suddenly and the gun went off. Uh. And before he had a chance to get the play pills, Judy and I entered the theater. So he wiped the fingerprints off the gun, threw it in the office, and dragged Silver down onto the stage. But I thought the police searched the theater. 
They did, but they never thought to look way down behind the props. What about the playbills? After the police left the building, the thief went back and took the playbills. Then he found he couldn't get out because of the police guard around the building. So he hid the playbills down among the props, too. Well, well. I guess the last drama has been played out in Dad's old opera house. You're sure Silver's going to be okay? Oh, yes. And what do you know? The thief has offered him $10,000 for the brace of silver pistols. He says he can sell them to a collector easy. Dr. Christian, what on earth are you doing with all those old keys? Ah, they're to the opera house, Judy. The records begin work next week. I just thought if we're going to sit in the gallery and eat peanuts... Oh, right. you're wonderful. <laughs> now that I know Sterling Silver, I can just imagine what it was all like. What will the show be, Doctor? Well, you know my favorite, Judy. With all the shooting in it, and the smoke filling the theater so we can scarcely see the actors. Costa's last stand. <laughs> The curtain descends on another Dr. Christian Prize play with our star, Jean Hersholt, waiting to greet you. And Judy Price right here to say... With thousands of war plants already reconverted and thousands more in the process, a flood of new products can be expected. But unfortunately, for workers once again using oils, dyes, or chemicals, sore hands may also be expected. If your hands are red and sore from irritants or just from hard work... Here's a suggestion. Protect your hands with Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. Before beginning work, smooth Vaseline Petroleum Jelly on your hands lightly. Vaseline Petroleum Jelly forms a protective film that helps keep grit from grinding into the hands, that safeguards against infection and makes dirt and grease lots easier to remove. Then when you've finished work and washed up, apply Vaseline Petroleum Jelly again to supplement natural skin oils that may be washed away by strong soaps, to hasten healing of nicks and scrapes. You'll see, your hands will feel much better when you give them this before and after protection with Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. And remember, there are many petroleum jellies on the market, but only one bears the trademark Vaseline. That trademark, owned by the Cheese Brew Manufacturing Company, is your guarantee of absolute purity. Now, here is Jean Herschel. Thank you very much. The uh, author of tonight's play, Sterling Silver, is Robert C. Schimmel of Milton, Massachusetts. And he's an old hand at the theatrical writing business. He's had uh, 15 one-act plays published and he has authored and produced many radio plays. He's engaged at present in coordinating radio production for the Boston Public Schools in a program to be known as the Boston Public School Hour, in which a different high school will be dramatized each week. Now, I have something else I'd like to say. The new victory loan drive for $11 billion started this week. It's the last of the war loans, and it's the most important one of all, because the money is going to be used for constructive purposes. This money will provide care for the wounded, care for the families of men who were killed, educational and other benefits for men who are being mustered out, transportation home for the many sons and husbands and brothers who are still waiting to see, and cost of policing occupied regions. These are the patriotic reasons for buying all the victory bonds you can possibly squeeze out of your budget. But don't forget, there's that other practical reason too. Victory bonds are a good investment. The best there is. So let's make this war alone the biggest success of them all. The next week we plan to present a new prize play, The Last Awakening, by James Boston of Cambridge, Massachusetts. 
We invite you all to listen next Wednesday evening to the Vaseline program, same time, same station. And until then, I'll say good night. Crack lips? Here's a friendly tip. Healing starts almost instantly with Vaseline lip ice. Get Vaseline lip ice tonight for quick relief, quick healing. Only 10 and 25 cents at your druggist. Vaseline lip ice.